This video series concerns Fyodor Dostoevsky's Demons. This book is also known as The Possessed. I'll be using the translation from Volokonsky and Pavir, the most available English modern translation, but perhaps not the best. This novel, Demons, is said to be inspired by actual events. The events were the assassination of a former member of a socialist group who had turned into a patriot and he was killed by the chief Russian revolutionary, Sergei Necheyev. Indeed, such an assassination happens in the book. A patriot is murdered by a revolutionary cell. And much in the book leads up to it, in much the way that that assassination was led up to. But it is not only inspired by actual events. Dostoevsky found permanent significance in this one assassination. He uses the novel to describe how a country like Russia could be made vulnerable to a revolutionary movement. And in order to describe that, Dostoevsky describes what a revolutionary movement is and why revolutionary movements arise, especially in modern times. So for Dostoevsky, the revolutionary movement that gives rise to such an assassinations is part of the larger project of modernity. Modernity leads to revolution, and revolution involves assassinations. If you want to understand modernity, you must go to its fruits in revolutionary violence. Think the French Revolution, for instance, or think, more ominously in Dostoevsky's context, the Russian Revolution. In analyzing the assassination and the events that lead up to it, the reader is presented with this clash of cultures with one culture, the old Russian one, seeming to give way to a new. Demons, therefore, seems to be Dostoevsky's most political novel. It concerns political revolution, why it happens, and what it must roll over in order to be successful. It has governors, it has henchmen. The revolutionary ambitions are framed in political terms. They aim for things like reforming the alphabet, or abolishing the family. The emancipation of serfs has just been accomplished politically in Russia. This emancipation raises the question whether the country will seek a more complete emancipation, whether the emancipation of the serfs is just a good start, or if it's the end point of reform. In a larger sense, however, all of Dostoevsky's novels are political. All his most serious novels concern the general organizing principles of society, society's notion of what is good, advantageous, and just. He is always concerned that the modern principles of equality, liberty, and science are undermining the conditions for a good, happy, faithful life in Russia. Notes from the Underground, for instance, written in 1864, concerns the modern scientific view of psychology and it worries that that view doesn't capture the human need for distinctiveness. That need for distinctiveness must be found in non-modern institutions like friendships, the political community, or a loving marriage. Crime and Punishment, written in 1866, also shows how modern psychology is insufficient at understanding what human beings are. Modern psychology in that novel cannot grasp the conscience and the conscience is above all what punishes someone who commits a crime. The Brothers Karamazov, his last great book published in 1880, is the most explicit in relating Dostoevsky's reservations about modernity. In that book, the modern characters imagine the remaking of the world in terms of modern science, and they imagine a modern revolution. Some of the characters are quite determined to bring that revolution about but they ultimately fail, or at least they don't yet succeed. Demons was written in 1871. It unquestionably explores Dostoevsky's moral and political reservations about modernity. It explores this issue through a treatment of intergenerational conflict. And in doing this, Dostoevsky is much like other writers, such as his one-time friend, Ivan Turgenev. Turgenev wrote a famous book years earlier entitled Fathers and Sons. In that book, the old fathers have a difficult time passing on their ways to their sons. 
Their sons are, to one extent or another, corrupted by the university education that their fathers want for them. One decent peasant, for instance, in that book, receives a son back from the university, and that son has become a nihilist of sorts. A decent aristocrat receives a son back from the university, who at least initially is much more liberal than he was when he had left. This son is sympathetic to the nihilist. But eventually that son rejects the nihilist's friendship. The book ends with the nihilist committing a form of suicide. The good son marries a decent woman, and the father of the good son marries a peasant woman. Liberals and peasants live together while the nihilists give up the ghost. That's the story of Turgenev's fathers and sons. Dostoevsky, as I say, frames this book, Demons, in much the same way. There is a father who is not much of a father, but he is the father to the novel's most cunning revolutionary. There is a mother who is not much of a mother, and she is mother to one of the next generation's main characters. But there is this difference between Dostoevsky and Turgenev. Both the father and the mother in Demons are representatives of the older generation, and they are liberals. They want to see Russia reformed. Neither of them believes in the Christian God. Both wholeheartedly hope that the emancipation of the serfs will lead to further and deeper reforms. Both send their sons to Petersburg. Both hope that their sons will receive education and make that make them the wave of the future. Neither maintains much of a connection to their sons. And both sons become enmeshed in revolutionary activity in one way or another. So the bottom line is that the liberal parents beget revolutionaries though they are slow to see it. And the pace of the novel forces upon us a deep and troubling set of questions. What is it about liberals that beget revolutionaries? Can liberals resist the overturning of societies through rev revolutionary violence from the left? Are these revolutionaries just liberals in a hurry, to use an old phrase? So what we have in Demons is a treatment, one, of the country that the liberals seek to reform, two, the way that the liberals seek to reform it, and three, the seeming inevitable way in which that reform is hijacked by revolutionaries. The revolutionaries want to destroy all that is connected to the old country, all that is distinctive about Russia. These revolutionaries will succeed in the book, not only in assassinating a Russian patriot, but also in burning the town down. They commit sundry other assassinations as well, and they sap the energy out of the liberals who are merely trying to reform the old order. Nothing much of the old order remains at the end of the book, or so it seems. This book seems especially prescient as an account of Russia in light of the fact that Russia underwent a serious revolution less than 50 years after it was written. The liberals of Russia could not see any enemies to their left. They favored helping the Bolsheviks instead of helping the Tsar. So Dostoevsky's book is an incredible act of diagnosis. He diagnoses the direction of Russian politics over the next decades. He saw it all coming everything but the gulags. It's quite astonishing. He sees the liberals awakening too late to do much to stop the revolutionary movement. It's incredible. And the book is worth the slog that it can be to many people. But then again, Dostoevsky had hoped to stave off such revolutionaries by diagnosing the problem and by defending the institutions associated with the old order. He defends Christian psychology and the Russian Orthodox Church. He defends the family, though he knows that it sometimes misfires. He seems to think that active love can be a force in the world when it is supported by churches and families. And this active love will stand in the way of revolutionary activity. As strong as Dostoevsky was in diagnosing the problem, 
His art was not sufficient to stave off the revolution. That to which he appealed was not sufficient to stop the revolution. And he could not conjure up much by way of an effective resistance. That is something we must also consider as we turn to this fine novel, Demons. <laughs>